Kanya Mohashwa is a self-taught artist who creates mixed medium paintings focusing on portraiture and human figures. Her work is inspired by how society responds to the roles and needs expressed by women. Coranger's art founder, Mohashwa, joins us now to share her insights and experience as an artist. Kanya, thank you so much for your time this evening and for joining us. Now, you were born in 1994, the birth of democracy, um, at a time where gender equality was just a thought on paper. When did you come to a time to say you would use the plight of women in art in order for their voices to be heard? Uh, thank you so much for having me. Good evening. Um, I think that most of the art and the content I create uh, stems from some of the experiences that I've had. And I realized that um, I wanted to actively respond to some of the social ills, such as gender-based violence and gender inequality. And I then thought to myself that maybe I can use my art as a way to respond to the needs expressed by women to leave a lasting impact and be the change that I want to see. And so this journey started for me, um, I think during lockdown actually, when I was processing some ideas on the content that I wanted to create moving forward. Mm. And which are some of the women figures that you find very inspirational? Um, so in terms of the, the content I create, a lot of the women that I highlight are women from women like Winnie Mandela, uh, women like Charlotte Madreke, women like Lili Ningoy. Um, and I think I realize that um, these are names and, you know, street names and buildings we drive past every day. But I never actually recall a day in my life where I studied anything about them when I was in school. And so this really intrigued me to do more research about them and find out what their contribution was to our political, economic, and social development. Mm. And why do you think that gender parity or the lack of gender parity exists, especially within our government and institutions where, where a lot of influence and decision-making is made, particularly when it comes to our country? Uh, I think that, you know, uh, a lot of our traditional cultural standards in some ways are flawed. Uh, people are conscientized by the environment that they grew up in, what they're taught, and that's all they know. Um, so I think that uh, people have to educate themselves about the importance of advancing women, um, starting from our homes, and then we'll be able to express the change when we come into contact with society. So I think um, the change starts from a grassroots level from where we come from at home and we bring that into our workplaces and everywhere we go including our leadership positions um, and so I think uh, a lot of the times we, we project uh, what we've been taught growing up and what we've been conscientized by and social constructs that we are surrounded by which inform the trajectory of the, the, the decisions that are made um, when it comes to the daily running of our country and decisions that are being made for women. Mm. Most certainly very inspiring to have such a young voice such as yours, not only being conscious and aware of what's happening in our society, but moreover using art in ensuring that that voice is, is further put out into the world. You had an exhibition, The Shiro's Rand. Talk to us about what inspired that exhibition. I mean, you, you exhibited at the, at the State Theatre um, about a year ago. How did that exhibition come about? Um, so I actually had my first solo exhibition at South African State Theatre at the beginning of last year, um, from January to February, and I had the second solo exhibition this year um, from March, uh, which was International Women's Month, and it was very fitting for the, the series that I'm currently working on, Shira's Rand, and basically it's inspired by women being represented on our currency and their faces. Um, being represented on our banknotes and our coins. And um, I realized that uh, we don't have representation of African women on levels like that in our leadership. And so I decided to use um, this series to challenge some of the, the social norms that affect um, gender imbalances um, in our society. Mm. And so 
So the series basically covered um, various stories of women that aren't really spoken much about or whose stories aren't really documented much about, just to, you know, also bring a remembrance to young people about how we got to where we are today. Sure, that's absolutely amazing. And how has the response been to, to that exhibition? Um, the the state theatre show was was amazing. Uh, the turnaround was was great. I think that I also didn't realize how much of an impact it was going to be. Um, I think that as time went by, I realized that the story that I was telling is something that needed to be heard, and it's something that is is continually growing. I just had an exhibition last week at BMW Joburg City as well. Um, just carrying on with the story and just the importance of conscientizing uh, people around why they need to, um, you know, honor women in their lives. And I think it also contributes to how they, they treat the women they come in contact with on a daily basis. Hmm. So I think the representation is really important. It most certainly is. I mean, art is, is a creative form, and you're the founder of Courage's Art, which of course looks at the business and the commercialization of that art. How important is that? Because for many artists, it's, it's about the love and the passion that they have for the art, but very few are able really to turn that into a very viable commercial business. Uh, well, absolutely. It's definitely not an easy business to go into. I think that um, there's a lot of structures that need to be put in place for the creative economy in our country. Uh, there's still a lot of room for improvement in terms of making, um, especially the visual arts sector, financially sustainable. Um, so I personally believe that it's important to diversify streams of income until you reach a big break because it is one of those things where it's, it becomes a waiting game until you get to a point where your artwork gets the platform that it needs to get to. Um, but it's important for people to remember to just diversify their sources of income and not throw all their eggs in one basket and just constantly, you know, network and build uh, relationships and partnerships where people and other organizations can partner with you in building something um, that is lucrative. Mm. And how receptive is the globe to South African art? Uh, I believe that African art um, has has really grown quite a lot um, from an international point of view. Um, as I'm speaking right now, my artworks are being shipped to the U.S. So I have seen quite um, a, a demand for for African art, not just in South Africa, but you know different parts of Africa as well. Um, so I think that uh, we are growing quite rapidly. Uh, there's definitely a, a huge demand for, for African art um, on an international scale. Kanya, you're a true inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best in your artistic endeavors, and we hope to see many, many more of your works.